One of the youngest clubs in the Bundesliga, VfL Wolfsburg were founded in 1945, only seven years after the formation of the city. They would participate in the second tier of the amateur leagues, then the second highest division in German football, until 1954 when they gained promotion to the Oberliga Nord. Their first season in the division was highlighted by a famous 1-0 victory over Hauer's Vau, and they stayed up by a point. However, after many years of near misses, relegation finally hit Wolfsburg in 1959. Another relegation, along with a famous friendly against Pelé and Santos followed, and with the introduction of the Bundesliga in 1963, Wolfsburg entered the Regionalliga, the semi-professional second division of German football behind the professional top flight. The Regionalliga became professional at the start of the 1974-75 season, was called the Zweite Bundesliga, and Wolfsburg were instantly relegated. Outside of one season back in the second division, Wolfsburg remained a third tier side until promotion in 1992. Wolfsburg established themselves as a solid second tier side, even making a surprising run to the DFB Pokal final in 1995, and in 1997 they finally reached the promised land of the Bundesliga. Ever since this promotion they have remained in the Bundesliga, being one of the very few sides to never be relegated from the league after spending over 20 years there. However, one season stands above the rest. In 2007, Wolfsburg survived what can only be considered as a miserable season. Picking up 5 points in their final 8 games, the Wolves finished 15th in the table for the second time in a row, just one place above the relegation zone ahead of Borussia Mönchengladbach, Alemannia Aachen and Jurgen Klopp's Mainz. Big changes were needed and Wolfsburg did not hesitate making them. On the very day of the final game of the 2006-07 season, Wolfsburg parted company with their manager, Klaus Argenthaler. His replacement? Felix Magat. Like Argenthala, Magat was a legend of the German game as a player, winning the Euros in 1980, three league titles with Hamburg, as well as winning the European Cup in 1983, where he scored the only goal. However, unlike Argenthala, Magat was a very successful manager. Having an incredibly positive time at Stuttgart, Magat was handed the Bayern Munich job, where he won back-to-back -back league and cup doubles. However, a poor start to the 2006-07 season got Magat sacked, and Wolfsburg took advantage, hiring him as both head coach and director of football. He became known for his tough coaching methods, improving fitness and conditioning, and a few years prior, he was even called the last dictator in Europe by one of his former players, Bacharou Salou. Now, as I said, Wolfsburg did not hesitate to make changes, and this summer saw no more than 14 players leave the club permanently. Wolfsburg responded by signing 16 new players in the summer. These included Ashkan Dejega, Makoto Hasebe, Christian Gentner, Sasha Rita, Marcel Schaefer, Josue, Diego Banaglio, Jan Simonek, Ricardo Costa, and the two players most synonymous with this story, Edin Zeko and the club's second most expensive player at the time at 4.5 million euros, Grafic. Unsurprisingly, with the new manager and a brand new set of players, Wolfsburg struggled at the start of the season, only winning five of their first 17 games. However, Magat stumbled upon the 4-4-2 diamond, playing Grafic and Dzeko up front, with Brazilian Marcelino behind, and the run of form led them to their best finish yet in the Bundesliga, fifth, and a spot in the UEFA Cup. As they were now gearing up for a European run, Wolfsburg's summer transfer window in 2008 was huge. Gone was player of the season Marcelino, who was replaced by a number 10 with a similar goal-scoring output and creative ability, especially from set pieces, German-born Bosnian midfielder Zvezdan Misimovic, who I actually got to speak to about this season. What a legend. Misimovic made his way through the Bayern Munich Academy and ended up representing the Bavarians five times. However, he made his name at Fahrerfeld Bochum, helping them finish eighth in their first season back in the top flight, playing a key role in Gekas winning the Tor Jäger Kanona before his brilliant one season at Nuremberg despite their relegation. In fact, due to his time at Bayern, by the start of the season, Misimovic was only one of four players to have won a top division title in the side. Wolfsburg's magic triangle was complete and Misimovic, who idolised Zinedine Zidane, had his own Inzaghi and Del Piero in Zeko and Grafic. But Misimovic was only Wolfsburg's third most expensive signing this summer. The Bundesliga side signed two current World Cup winning defenders from Palermo, Christian Zaccardo providing competition for Sasha Rita and, in a shocking twist, Andrea Barzali smashing their record transfer in the process. A native of Florence, Barzali wanted to join Fiorentina, but when the Wolves offered the centre-half a three-year offer of 2.5 million, compared to Iviola's 1.2 million over five years, the decision was obvious. We are glad that the talks with Palermo have been completed successfully. It says a lot for our work that a player of this stature is willing to join Wolfsburg, said Magat. Wolfsburg started their season off quite strong. 
They won their opening game 2-1 against Köln and followed it up with 3-2-2 draws. But their first major scalp came in match day 5 as they absolutely destroyed tabletop as Hamburg 3-0 after a 13-minute blitz inside the Volkswagen Arena. Grafic put the icing on the cake after a delightful chip. However, their unbeaten run wouldn't last long, as the very next game they'd lose 2-1 to 16th place Karlsruhe, topped off by Grafic picking up a red card. A quite remarkable game followed when the Wolves met Schalke in Gelsenkirchen. Wolfsburg led 2-1, but with 18 minutes to go, Ricardo Costa was sent off and gave away a penalty. Rafinha of Schalke missed, but in the 90th minute of the game, in his first game back from a metatarsal injury, Manuel Neuer assisted Kevin Kurani's late equaliser. Now, Wolfsburg's next seven games were the very definition of inconsistent. Win, loss, win, loss, win, loss, win. The loss against Bayern Munich coming after a two-goal lead. Nevertheless, what wasn't inconsistent was the phenomenal output of goals and assists by Wolfsburg's magic triangle. In that seven-game spell, the trio either scored or created all 18 of their side's goals. A graffiti injury saw him miss the next three games and the end of the Hinrunde. Wolfsburg picked up four points in those three games, and he saved Dzeko's penalty. Wolfsburg ended the first half of the season in ninth after 17 games, nine points behind surprise leaders Hoffenheim. Wolfsburg were the league's fifth highest scorers with 35 goals, but only had the ninth best defensive record, conceding 25. To have any chance of winning the league or even getting into Europe, they would either have to score more or tighten up their defence. They did both. During the winter break, Magat made a few changes to his side. Slovakia right-back Peter Pekaric was brought in, eventually laying down a starting spot and pushing Sassarita forward ahead of him, who replaced Dejega, adding more defensive stability. And in quite a brave move, Barzali's centre-back partner Ricardo Costa was dropped for Jan Simonek. What happened next would be legendary. Wolfsburg started the rook runder with a 1-1 draw away at Köln, and in the next seven fixtures, they went crazy. Wolfsburg won all seven of those fixtures, with Zeko and Grafic scoring 15 of their 17 goals, wins over the top two of Hertha and Hamburg, and their 4-3 win over Schalke being highlights. After their seven-match winning run, Wolfsburg had jumped to second with nine games remaining, and their next fixture was one of the most famous this season produced, as Wolfsburg welcomed Jürgen Klinsmann's third place Bayern Munich to the Volkswagen Arena. Both sides' records before this game were exactly the same. 48 points, 14 won, 6 drawn, 5 lost. 56 goals scored and 31 goals conceded, absolutely nothing in it. The majority of the first half was a brutal watch. Bayern dominated the ball, Wolfsburg made a fair few fouls and nothing was really being created. That was until the 44th minute. One Misimovic corner onto the head of the free Christian Gentner and Wolfsburg took the lead, however Bayern equalised instantly through Luca Toni, 1-1 was the score at half time. The second half opened up big time. Starting in the 63rd minute, when some nice work between Gentner and Schaefer set up Zeko at the near post to make it 2-1. 14 minutes later, it was 5-1. Zeko and Grafic made it 4-1, but the fifth goal from the Brazilian was truly a work of art. Picking up the ball from 40 yards out, Grafic powered his way into the box, dribbled past two buying players and the goalkeeper before back heeling the ball into the back of the net, scoring one of the greatest goals in the league's history. It was a truly iconic goal to cap off what was an iconic performance as they moved to the top of the table, all whilst handing Bayern Munich their heaviest league defeat for seven years. Wolfsburg won the next two games, completing a 10-game winning streak, the first team to do so in the Bundesliga since Borussia Mönchengladbach in the 1986-87 season. However, their 10-match winning run eventually came to an end at the hands of 17th place Energie Cottbus. A 4-0 win over Hoffenheim and a 4-1 loss to Stuttgart, where Mario Gomez scored all four, just days after Magat announced he'd be swapping the green and white of Wolfsburg for the blue and white of Schalke, still left the Wolves on top. Remarkably, with only three games remaining, just two points separated the top four. In their next two games, Wolfsburg annihilated Hanover and Dortmund 3-5-0 and respectively, with Zeko and Grafic scoring all eight. The final match day of the Bundesliga season fell on Saturday the 23rd of May and only three points separated the top four. Although Hertha's much worse goal difference made it virtually impossible for them to win their first Bundesliga title, a Wolfsburg loss could see the two previous Bundesliga winners in Stuttgart or Bayern, who were facing each other, win the title again. Wolfsburg's opponents were Werder Bremen and any nerves would soon turn into excitement as Misimovic scored the all-important first goal after six minutes. The result was never in doubt. 1-0 turned into 2-0, which turned into 3-0, and by halftime, Wolfsburg were 3-1 up. Poetically, Grafic and Zeko rounded off the scoring in a 5-1 romp, and for the first time in their history, Wolfsburg were the champions of Germany.
Magat had masterminded an unlikely champion in Wolfsburg. It's a dream. I never believed we had the chance to win the title, but the boys deserve it. And leaving now will be very difficult, said an emotional Magat. On the title win, the legendary Franz Beckenbauer said that Magat had turned an average team into champions. Masimovic hit a Bundesliga record 20 assists in the title winning season, and despite only playing 25 games, Grafic scored a ridiculous 28 goals. Alongside his strike partner Zeko, they became the most prolific strike partnership in Bundesliga history, scoring 54 of Wolfsburg's 80 goals, going one better than Bayern Munich's Gerd Müller and Uli Hoeneß in 1973. It was an iconic season that will never be forgotten. Thanks for watching.